Sup fam, welcome back. So today we're going to be comparing Silent Hill 1 and Resident Evil 8. Because again, I felt so many Silent Hill vibes from Resident Evil 8 and I just have to talk about it. So let's get right into it. It's you, the child's father. Child? Hey, wait, do you mean Rose? Is she here? <laughs> Rose! Rose, yes. She is in great danger. The bell tolls for us all. They're coming again. <laughs> Were you ringing that bell? I knew you'd come. You want the girl, right? The girl? You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. All right, let's talk a little bit about Silent Hill and Resident Evil 8 and how they approach horror. So to start with, we have to do a little bit of backstory on Silent Hill. Silent Hill was actually, supposedly, rumor has it, Konami's answer to Capcom's Resident Evil, which makes this really interesting. It makes it like a big old loop. Resident Evil, the first one that came out, had a huge impact on the gaming industry and horror gaming, that genre in general. And it really brought zombies back to being a mainstream, or part of the mainstream. Silent Hill and Team Silent wanted something that was gonna compete with Resident Evil. Uh, and so when they approached Silent Hill, they really had a focus on atmosphere and, you know, these monster designs and really capturing that really scary vibe that Resident Evil was so, so well able to encapsulate. With Resident Evil 8, we have to talk a little bit about Resident Evil 7. So Resident Evil 7, the team that designed it, really, really wanted to push cutscenes. And we see that a lot, and I talked a little bit about it briefly in my last video where they really, really wanted it to be like no cutscenes at all whatsoever. The player was always in control, the player was always the one that was playing, and it was really, really interesting to see how that played out in Resident Evil 7. There was a little bit of backlash with it, and I think that we see that in Resident Evil 8, where we do start to see these cutscenes come back. We don't see it as heavily as maybe like Resident Evil 1, <laughs> you know, but we do see some more cutscenes. So the vibe that Resident Evil 8 really, really has is this Again, they're sticking to these horror basics of thick, spooky atmosphere, but really building off of these previous horror games and the mechanics that they have already laid a foundation for. Both Resident Evil 8 and Silent Hill, the first one, all of them, but you know, we're talking about the first one. Uh, both of these games have a heavy focus on atmosphere and they build up a thick atmosphere of spookiness through you know obviously their monster de designs the layout of each level that we run through in both games honestly and in both games resident evil 8 and silent hill we follow a father who's in search of uh his daughter with harry mason looking for cheryl and ethan winters looking for rose both have to go through this or like see through the trickery of the cult that's involved in their kidnapping and go through just a series of hoops in order to get them back. Both cult leaders in each of the games uses this dad to further their own goals. With Harry Mason we see Dahlia manipulating him into setting up her ceremony to get her daughter Alessa to birth their god. And with Ethan Winters we see that very similarly with Miranda where she manipulates Ethan in order to set up her ceremony and to get rid of the rest of the lords that she was using along the way. And then of course both games end with this rebirth where we get Cheryl once again reborn as a baby and Rose reborn also as a baby, even though she was a baby before. But we see her reborn from the mold, the ceremony, and she gets returned back to Mia. And Harry gets to take his daughter home as well and they both raise them. And then we get to see that actually come full circle with both games it looks like, at least for Resident Evil 8 it looks like, where we get a sequel focused on that daughter, which is very, very exciting. Okay, so... Let's compare Silent Hill's story structure to Resident Evil 8. So we start with wronging a loved one or having a loved one wronged. In Silent Hill 1, Cheryl is kidnapped by Dahlia Gillespie, who intends to use her to bring about her cult's god, whereas in Resident Evil 8, Rose is stolen by Mother Miranda, and she intends to use her to resurrect her own daughter. Okay, this one's a little complicated. As all good villain plots are, Cheryl is one half of Alessa, Dahlia's daughter, and Dahlia wanted to use Alessa as a vessel to birth their god. 
Alessa didn't want that, as it's horrifying and extremely painful. So she wrapped up half of her soul in the form of an infant and left her by the side of the road where Harry and his wife found her and took her in. When Harry returned to Silent Hill with Cheryl on vacation, Cheryl was reabsorbed with Alessa, making her whole again. Dahlia kidnaps Alessa, aka Cheryl, to complete the ritual. In RE8, Ethan's is just as convoluted. Rose has powers that Ethan isn't aware of, and these powers are something that Miranda can harness to resurrect her own daughter. In order to do this, however, she splits Rose into four pieces and gives each piece, in the form of a flask, to each of her lords for safekeeping. Next we have Get Called to Silent Hill. So Harry actually goes to Silent Hill on vacation, and after getting in a car accident, he wakes up to find Cheryl missing and goes to search for her. So Chris Redfield, Chris Redfield, steals Ethan's daughter, and while transporting Rose, Ethan, and Mia, he crashes the car. Awesome. And after Ethan wakes up from this car accident, he also goes on the search for Rose. So going a little deeper, Harry takes Cheryl to Silent Hill on vacation, because the town actually used to be a hot spot for tourism before it all went spooky. Though he almost hits a little girl in the road and has to swerve to avoid her, crashing his car in the process. When he wakes up, Cheryl isn't in the car anymore, though he thinks he sees her out in the thick of the fog and takes off running after her. For Ethan, Chris Renfield bursts into Ethan's living room, shooting up Mia like the loose cannon that he is, and kidnapping both Rose and Ethan. After the car they're all transported in crashes, Ethan wakes up to find Rose missing and travels to the nearest village, <laughs> get it, to get help slash look for them. Next, we get tested by Silent Hill. To save his daughter, Harry must fight through Dahlia's trickery. Along the way, he's also faced with a shady doctor and a cop who falls under control of a parasite and attacks Harry. Harry needs to navigate both situations, with his actions deciding his ending. Ethan needs to gather all the flasks his daughter has been separated into and find a way to stop Miranda's ceremony. Harry's test is easy to muck up. He's not only got to catch up with Dahlia to save his daughter, but he also needs to sort out Sybil, who gets possessed and attacks Harry halfway through, and the shady Dr. Kaufman, who will unwittingly help save his daughter at the very end of the game. In RE8, Ethan needs to recover the four flasks Rose was split into and then interrupt Miranda's ceremony once Rose has been put back together again in order to get his daughter back. Which is a lot easier said than done. Each flask is in the care of one of the lords of the village and each has their own special ability slash way they approach trying to take care of Ethan. Learn something about yourself slash your relationship with the person involved. Harry learns his daughter is half of Dahlia's daughter, a manifestation of a portion of her soul. Ethan learns Rose has some great power locked within her. So both Ethan and Harry learn there's some supernatural bullcrappery afoot with their daughters. Harry and Cheryl being a manifestation of half of Alessa's, Dahlia's daughter, Soul, and Rose holding a great power that can potentially help resurrect Miranda's daughter. Regain loved one in a way you hadn't expected at the start of the journey. Harry gets his daughter back, though she's reborn again as a baby as Alessa once again manifests the remainder of her soul to escape from Silent Hill. Ethan regains Rose, though his time with her is cut short and any thought of them returning to be a happy family together with Mia is lost. Alessa once again manifests her soul in the form of a baby and hands her off to Harry. Harry must raise his daughter from scratch and even then, she won't be the exact same Cheryl he'd had before. In a way, Rose is reborn as well as she's brought back together from her flask form and her power is awakened as she fights to resist Miranda's efforts to transform her into her daughter's vessel. Ethan's time with Rose is cut short as he doesn't have the strength to survive the encounter with Miranda. Although he isn't destined to leave with his daughter as he intended, to return to living as a happy family with Mia, he is able to save her from the fate Miranda had slated for her. Leave Silent Hill. Good ending. So in the good ending, Harry leaves with his infant daughter. And for RE8, Ethan hands off Rose to Chris Redfield and Mia to ensure she survives as he returns to the village to ensure once and for all that Miranda is dealt with and no longer a threat to her. Harry leaves with Sybil and his infant daughter. He restarts the process of raising her and we get to see the fruit of that in Silent Hill 3. Ethan is able to return Rose to Mia via Chris Redfield, fulfilling his promise to get her back and ensuring she's raised with her loving mother. 
Thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, you know what to do. Uh, it really helps the channel out, of course, we all know this. Uh, but most importantly, have a good day.